Hello guys and welcome to this video about Anderson and the Alonzo classification of odontoid process fractures. So this is the most commonly used classification for odontoid process fractures. And in this video, I'm going to talk about a definition for this classification. Then I'm going to mention the types and talk about each type in details and I'm going to mention the suggested treatment for each type so let's start so it's a three types classification system for identified process fractures uh, and it takes into account the level of the fracture in, rela in relation to the odontoid process and the C2 vertebral body. So the types, this is the, uh, as I said, they are based on the fracture level or the fracture line. So type one is a fracture at the tip of the odontoid process. Type two is a fracture at the base of the odontoid process. And type two A is also at the base of odontoid process, but it is a commutative, a commutative fracture and fracture type 3 is at the body of the C2 vertebrae. So we have the type 1 is at the tip of the odontoid and type 2 is the, at the base and type 2a is comminuted and it is also at the base and type 3 is at the, uh, is at the, the, the C2 vertebrae. So we have this drawing here and it shows the, the C2 vertebrae. It is also known as the axis. Uh, and we have here the dense. This is the, the odontoid process that our topic is about today. And we have here the pedicle. We have the transverse process. And we have the vertebral body here. And we have the superior articular facet here and the inferior articular facet. So now let's, let, let's explain each type in details. So let's start with type one. So type one, fracture location is at the tip of the identity process, as I said earlier, and it is a simple avulsion fracture. Mechanism of injury is lateral force applied when head is extended so when head is extended a lateral force is applied this fracture could happen and it is a rare type and it is stable and the treatment because of it is a stable fracture the treatment is immobilization by a rigid collar until pain subsides yeah so that's type one so we have here this drawing and it shows the type one. It is at the tip of the odontoid process as we can see here. And it's, a, uh, it's a, an avulsion fracture and it is rare. And the mechanism of injury is lateral force applied when head is extended. And the treatment, as I said, because it's a stable fracture, is treated by immobilization until pain subsides. Type 2 fracture, on the other hand, is at the junction of the odontoid process and the body of the axis vertebrae. As I said, it is at the base, so at the, at the junction between the odontoid and the body of the axis vertebrae. And the type of, of the fracture is a simple fracture, but the mechanism of injury is either hyperflexion or hyperextension. With hyperflexion, we get the anterior displacement of the odontoid process, also known as the dense. With the hyperextension, is we get the posterior displacement of the odontoid process. And this is the most common classification, and it has the highest non-union rates out of the uh, of the rest types. And it is unstable fracture. So the treatment here is pretty controversial 
but this is like the, uh, the uh, I have this the most commonly used treatment. So young patients with undisplaced fractures uh, get traction and then followed by immobilization. So immobilization by a collar or hollow vest. Elderly patients with undisplaced fractures, uh, they also get traction then followed by immobilization and surgery is has poor risk to benefit ratio for these people. So yeah, but they have higher unionion rates than the young patients. Yeah, so that's why you consider surgery in this group of patients, but it has poor risk to benefit ratio. So the traction and the immobilization is a better option. Patients with displaced fractures, they get surgery by inserting an anterior lag screw from the C2 body into the dense. Yeah, so that's a suggested treatment for these, for the displaced fractures. I have this drawing here. It shows the the type two fracture. It is it's a simple fracture at the junction between the odontoid and the C2 vertebrae. Yeah, and it's a simple fracture. It is it is the most common, but it is the most dangerous one. Uh, and the treatment, as I said, if it is not displaced, then traction and immobilization. Uh, but if it displaced, then surgery has to be done and it is by laxicru inserted from the C2 body into the odontoid process. Yeah, that's, so that's type 2 here. Now for the type 2A, so the fracture location is at the base of the odontoid process. It is the same as type 2, but this time it's a, a commutative fracture. And mechanism of injury is either hyperflexion or hyperextension as the same as type 2 and it has even higher non-union rates compared to type 2 and it represents 5 to 10 percent of type 2 fractures and the treatment is by surgery and it's a C1 C2 fusion by posterior approach So we have this drawing here. It shows the a community fracture at the base of the adenoid, and uh, and this this either uh, this either caused by hyperextension or hyperflexion, as I said, and it is treated with a C1 C2 fusion by posterior approach. So that's two, type two A. Now we have type three. So the fracture location is it through the adenoid and into the lateral masses of this of the axis vertebrae uh, and the fracture type is a simple fracture and the mechanism of injury is unclear it is it has to be it has to do with the axial loading and some force is applied and it is a relatively stable fracture and it has the best prognosis for healing because of the larger uh, surface areas of the bone compared to the odontoid fracture, the type one and type two odontoid fractures. And the treatment this time is, if it is undisplaced, then immobilization for eight to 12 weeks. And if it is displaced, then reduction by traction and then immobilization for eight to 12 weeks. Uh, we have this drawing here and it shows the fracture it is at the at the c2 vertebrae and it goes through the the body of the c2 and into the lateral masses as we can see here yeah and it is uh, it is relatively stable and that's why it is if it is not displaced it's treated by immobilization as i said before but if it is displaced, then it is treated by uh, traction, then immobilization. Yeah, that's it for this classification. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like, 
and subscribe and see you in the next video. Peace.